we definitely believe in Bitcoin and, and we believe that Bitcoin's the most disruptive force of the decade. And so despite Bitcoin's move higher today, investors have been taking some risk off the table. They're selling crypto. Uh, that the rules around exchanges, security tokens, the um, uh, digital currencies and what is and is not digital property, I think they're still a bit murky. The real elegance of proof of work is that uh, in 10 years, someone that owns no Bitcoin can read the paper. They can go and, and uh, drop a piece of hardware on a volcano somewhere you don't know of, plug in the internet and start to create Bitcoin and no one can stop them, right? It's, it's literally permissionless and it's open. Now, you're not guaranteed to have uh, a property or a commodity just because you use that. There are things you could do that would make it look more like a security. But, um, but the fact that Bitcoin has the history it has, where the Satoshi coins never moved for about 18 months, I mean, from whatever, January 3rd of 2009 to, to May 22nd of 2010, the pizza day, uh, the product basically was mined uh, kind of as a hobby and then it traded for a couple of pennies. And so on Pizza Day, the protocol was 21 million hard cap. You know, the block size was set. All of the incentives were set for the next thousand years. Now, we weren't sure whether someone would me mess with that. But then along comes the, the block size wars. And the block size wars, a little civil war. And the conclusion is the original protocol was unchanged. And now Bitcoin has this 12, 13 year history where the protocol hasn't changed. And nobody, uh, no one ended up getting any of it in a pre-mine or initial coin offering. And, and there's no treasury and no management team, which means that anybody holding Bitcoin today either mined it or they paid a fair value. And the fair value came many, many years after pizza day, right? So like my, in my company's case, we put nearly $4 billion up to buy less than, you know, three quarters of a percent of the supply. And we had to pay 3 billion, you know, 750 million, some huge amount of money. The problem is if you're a public official, if you're a mayor, a governor, a senator, a congressman, and if you stood in front of Congress and said, I really think Facebook stock is a better store of value than the US dollar. Or if you said, I want everybody in my city to own Twitter stock, people would say, it seems like a conflict of interest. Yeah, 100%. Okay, so ultimately, if you look at the crypto economy, it's, you know, at the foundation will be commodities that are universally acknowledged property. And then you can stack on top of those things, securities or, or other, and there are other protocols, by the way, lightning protocol, other protocols that may not be, that may not have a token, they have a place too. But the reason that Bitcoin is not gonna switch to proof of stake is because for one, of course, the entire community fought a civil war to keep the mon the policy from changing, the protocol from changing, and yeah. that's why it is what it is. But number two, uh, it's highly likely that if you did it wrong, you would end up becoming a security. And if you become a security, its usefulness for a nation state or a public figure would dramatically deteriorate. Plus, you know, you've got this permission issue, which is who has permission to stake their tokens and then the software developers have to write some code to decide who gets to stake and the problem with software code that controls who can do this is that someone writes the software yeah. and then the issue is who writes the software so it would drive the thing into chaos so i don't think politically it's it will ever happen i think that the real hardcore environmentalists um aren't really focused on this i think it's a fringe set of environmental mm -hmm. movements uh, that might be encouraged by certain crypto entrepreneurs to focus on this. 99.95% of the carbon emissions in the world come from something other than Bitcoin right. energy usage. So ultimately the hardcore environmentalists are gonna target cars and airplanes and buildings. And you know, if you've seen those islands in China where they built like 50 skyscrapers that were empty and then they demolished them all, that's an example of a real climate problem, yeah. overbuilding and destroying. 
So I, I don't really think the, the people that are, are interested in carbon emissions are going to find a solution because, of course, eliminating Bitcoin keeps 99.95% of the carbon emissions. They don't really solve their problem. It's a rounding error. And the people that are concerned about energy usage don't really solve their problem either because 99.9% of energy usage is not Bitcoin. And Bitcoin energy usage is falling 18% a year or more because of the protocol. So ultimately, I think it's noise and it's FUD. It's pretty obvious that the world wants digital currency. And I think the good news here, Ben, is that um, there's kind of universal agreement that digital currency is cool and useful. And here's an important thing we uh, chasm we crossed over 18 months. 18 months ago, a lot of intelligent people said, well, this cryptocurrency stuff, if it's so good, someone's going to ban it. And they're saying, well, maybe Bitcoin's so good that the government will ban it and cryptocurrency is so good they'll ban it. I really think if you fast forward to today and you look at all the debate, it's pretty clear the consensus is, and this is following the China crackdown, the China exodus. Mm -hmm. I think the consensus is cryptocurrency is here to stay. Yeah. We need, we need a dollar, a stable dollar. We need a digital property, uh, you know, and 24-7, uh, and 365 trading, that's an innovation that's faster, higher. We have high velocity monetary assets. We're crossing the chasm from entrepreneurial early stage. The first decade was entrepreneurial driven, kind of wild west with not without many rules of the road. And the second decade is institutionalization and normalization and regularization. And you're, you've got about a 36 month to 48 month period where some, some rules are clear. Like I think, for example, if you want to buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin and hold it for a hundred years, the rule's kind of clear. You can buy it. If you sell it, you pay taxes on it. If you don't sell it, it's like you're just holding it. That's clear. If you want to transfer $100 million of Bitcoin to someone, you know, in Africa, you've probably got a KYC, you know, <laughs> who you send it to. There's some things like that that are kind of clear. I think that, uh, that the rules around exchanges, security tokens, uh, the um, uh, digital currencies, and what is and is not digital property, I think they're still a bit murky. You know, I mean, the Bitcoin Mining Council is it's an informal association of Bitcoin miners. And the mission is to educate the world on the benefits of Bitcoin and on the benefits of Bitcoin mining. So it's it's an educational uh, organization. Um, and uh, our number one thing we do is we run a survey and we organize all the Bitcoin miners so we can actually get real facts. One of the most useful facts we got is that 58.5% of all the energy used in Bitcoin mining in the world is is renewable, sustainable energy. And we didn't know that a year ago. What we also know is we have a, a decent idea of the joules per terahash that go into hashing. So we can see the rate at which the energy efficiency is improving. We can see the total energy consumption. We have a sense of of energy sources and we can see engagement of bitcoin miners and we publish that to the world and then the bitcoin miners themselves they do brief uh all sorts of political organizations there are state level hearings there are congressional hearings there are senatorial hearings there's also all you know there's all sorts of fairly accomplished uh, uh crypto lobbyist and and digital asset advocacy groups you know digital chamber of commerce and blockchain associations and their state level associations. I really think there's a lot of organizations that have this mission. Some are more focused on political advocacy. Some are more focused on educating the media and investors. It's not really our interest in doing the job of all of these various actors. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.